Hey, what's up everyone? BNGF Plus here. In today's video, I wanted to talk about Script AI Manager in BeamNG Drive and some of the more advanced tips and techniques that you can use with it. I've done a couple of videos already using Script AI, including how you can set up realistic police chases, as well as using motorcades and convoys. If you haven't seen these videos already, you might want to check them out as it goes over the basics of getting started using the tool. So in this video, we're going to go over a few more techniques. One is how we can fix timing issues when things aren't working quite right. Two is how we can use timing to our advantage to create various crash scenarios, things like T-bone crashes, intersection crashes, etc. And three, how to create crashes such as pileups using script AI that don't necessarily require timing. To start things off, let's just go ahead and create a very simple script AI situation where the blue car is going to attempt to overtake the green car on the highway. To get to the script AI manager, we're going to open the world editor by pressing F11 and under the tools menu, gameplay, we're going to select script AI manager where we can select one of the vehicles to record a path for. In this case, we're going to want to make sure the green car, which is the coupe, is selected as we're going to record its path first. We're going to press the record button. And if I press shift C on the keyboard, it's going to bring me back to the vehicle. And I'm going to unpause and start driving the car just like I normally would. Now that we're done recording the path, we're going to press stop recording. And if we hit the play button, we can see what the playback looks like for that car. Taking a pause here, and before we reset this vehicle's path and move to the next one, one of the first recommendations I want to give is that you use the pause functionality frequently. This is important when you're working with multiple vehicles to ensure that when you restart the path of the first vehicle and go to record the path for the second one, that the first vehicle isn't already started so that you're trying to record a vehicle while the other one's already moving. Let me show you what that looks like now. After pressing on Restart Replay for the first car, it's going to bring it back to its starting point. The reason we do all this while the game is paused is because we don't want the first vehicle to start driving while we're recording the path for the second one, otherwise everything's going to be out of sync when we go to play it back. So now let's unpause the game and record the second vehicle just like we did the first one. So now back to our original scenario, we're going to try driving and having the second car pass the first car. Once both vehicle paths have been recorded, we're going to press the play button at the top of the screen here, again with the game paused. That's going to put both vehicles in their starting position, and when I unpause the game, we can take a look at what this looks like. Pausing once again, obviously you can see this isn't the path that was recorded. But actually, the path itself is okay. It's just the timing of things didn't quite work out. What we saw was the blue car didn't go all the way around the green car. Instead, it started to cut in too early and clip the back of the green car and spun it out. This means that we can actually fix this using the existing paths without having to re-record both vehicles. Let's go back to our starting point by pressing play all. And if we think about what we just saw, essentially the green car got a little bit too far ahead, which meant the blue car didn't have enough time to get around it. We can actually fix this by giving the blue car a little bit of a head start over the green car. To do this, I'm going to unpause the game, and after about half a second or so, I'm going to pause the game once again. So obviously, as you can see, both cars got started. Now if I flip back to the green car, I'm going to press on Restart Replay while the game's paused, and that's obviously going to bring it back to its starting position, and we can see behind it, the blue car has already gotten a bit of a head start. We can even see how this is playing out in the script AI window. We can see that the green car has a playback of 0%, meaning it's just getting started, whereas the blue car is at a playback of 5%, so it's already started its path. We'll talk a little bit more about these percentages and how they can be helpful later on in this video. So now let's unpause and take a look at what the path looks like with the blue car having a little bit of a head start. So as you can see, this time it was successful, and it was just a matter of making that very small timing change when starting out the vehicles. 
This may not work in every situation, and there may be times where you need to re-record the entire script AI path, but if you're noticing the path seems to be good, and things are just a little bit off like we saw before, it might just be a matter of adjusting the timing to make things work. Staying on the subject of script AI timing, let's take a look at how we can use it to our advantage to create various crash scenarios. All right, so here we are on the East Coast map, and the situation I want to create is this white car is going to go straight ahead, run through the stop sign, and cause a T-bone accident in the intersection. Let's take a look at how we can set this up. So let's start off simple, and we're going to open up the World Editor by pressing F11, and Tools, Gameplay, Script AI Manager, like we did before. And we currently have the uh, white car, the Moonhawk, selected, so I'm going to press Record. I'm going to press Shift-C to lock the camera onto it and I'm just going to drive it through the intersection. At this point, it doesn't matter that there's no oncoming traffic because we're going to adjust the timing for all of that in just a moment. So now that I have the path recorded, I'm going to press stop. We can even replay it just to make sure everything looks good. Okay, and I'm going to press restart replay and I'm going to stop playing it for now while we set up the other oncoming traffic. So on the road that's perpendicular to the one that has the white car, I've set up some cars that we can use as traffic. We'll need to record script AI paths for each of these vehicles just like we did before. So I'm going to quickly go through that and set up some script paths. You're probably noticing that I'm letting the vehicles crash down at the end of the road here. Um, that's because it doesn't really matter what happens at the end because the actual crash is going to happen back at the intersection. Um, so we don't really need to worry about how things end down here. So now with everything reset and paused, I just wanted to show you what the script AI paths look like on the road. So you can see the yellow one is the white car that's going to be coming across and the various colors over here are from the traffic that's going to be coming down the road. We might end up being lucky in that if we simply just play this all back, it might result in a crash like the one we're looking for. But to demonstrate that we do have some control over the timing of things, I want to specifically try and target having the white car crash into this white pickup truck. So I have the camera positioned back at the intersection, and let's take a look at where things stand now without adding in any sort of timings. So I'm going to press play all in the script AI manager, and I'm going to unpause the game. All right, so as you can see, the car has obviously missed all of the oncoming traffic. So now we need to get into adjusting some of the timings. So back to the earlier concept that we spoke about around giving a specific vehicle a head start over another one. In this case, we actually need to give our oncoming traffic a little bit of a head start. So to do this, I'm going to press play all, which is going to reset all of the vehicles. So now this time, instead of guessing a number of seconds that we need to wait before we reset the car, I'm going to watch the percentages. Specifically, I'm going to take a look at the percentage of the pickup truck, and I'm going to start off by picking a specific percentage that the pickup is at when I'm going to reset the Moonhawk. Let's say as a starting point, we're going to let the pickup get to 10% before we pause the game and reset the car. If it doesn't work out, we can always make adjustments. So I'm going to hit play all and unpause the game. I'm then going to pause it when the pickup gets to 10% and I'm going to reset the Moonhawk, which is the car, and I'm going to unpause it and we'll take a look at what that looks like. So you can see still, it's a little bit early. So we're going to pick a new percentage. I think maybe 15% might make sense, and we'll try it again. So again, I've paused the game when the pickup's at 15%. I'm going to reset the car and unpause the game, and we'll see what happens. So there we go, we now know that 15% is the number that we want the pickup truck to be at before we reset the car in order to get the crash we want in the intersection. And now because we know it's going to work, we can actually close the world editor, go into photo mode and position the camera uh, where we want it to be. So if I just put the camera there approximately, because we saw the pickup and the car kind of fall down into this ditch. And now if I continue playing it back, we should get the crash we're looking for at the camera angle we want. 
Now the last concept I wanted to show you will hopefully sort of tie everything that we've done up until now together, and that's going to be how we can do a highway pileup style crash with traffic. To start things off, I've already created a simple crash scene using Script AI and the two vehicles on the screen. Let's take a look at what that looks like before we add in additional vehicles and traffic. So pausing it right there, we can see that the crash worked out pretty well and the timings are already set, so all we'll need to do is play back those two vehicles and the crash will be successful. While this is fine as it is, let's now look at how we can add traffic to the highway that will contribute to the pileup crash. So now with those two vehicles reset, I've added in some additional vehicles behind the van that we can use as traffic. Starting with the first car and with the game paused, I'm going to play back the van script AI path, but not the hatch. This is because I, I don't want any interference or collisions to happen while we're recording the traffic path. So if I hit record and start driving just like I want it to. You saw the van take a little bit of a swerve, which obviously indicates that this is where the collision is going to occur. So at this point, I've paused the game and I'm going to stop the recording for this first vehicle. It's also important to remember, just like before, to click on more and uncheck loop. That way the vehicle is not going to keep resetting and playing it over again. It's just going to stop when it finishes its path. Now at this point, all of the script AI paths have been recorded, including for the traffic vehicles. And with the display path checkbox checked, you can actually see on screen what each of the vehicle's paths will look like leading up to the crash scene. Before we get started, I'll uncheck the display path, close the world editor. And the other thing I wanna do is go into the environment setting and right down here at the bottom, I'm gonna clean up any tire marks that were left from when I was recording the paths. With the camera now in position, let's go ahead and hit play for all of the vehicles and we'll take a look at what this looks like. So that worked out pretty well by just having Script AI play back all of the vehicles that we recorded and having them crash into the pileup. One of the things you may have noticed is this beige colored car braked very late going into the pileup. This is somewhat unrealistic as in reality, he probably would have seen the pile up happening and tried to stop much sooner. So keeping this in mind, let's replay all of the vehicles and I'm gonna pause the game when I think some of the vehicles at the back, such as the beige car, should be braking. Pausing the game right here, it should be pretty obvious to the red and the beige cars in the back that a pileup is happening in front of them. So rather than letting Script AI play their paths out, I'm going to open up Script AI Manager in the World Editor. And for those two vehicles, ETKI and Midsize, I'm going to stop their paths early. This is also a good opportunity to change the camera angle while the game's paused. Pausing once more, you can see it was a much more realistic reaction to the pileup. Rather than driving straight into the pileup and braking very, very late, both of the vehicles braked early, causing them to spin out before they crashed. Using the same concept that we just discussed of stopping some of the vehicles early, the other thing we can do is we can actually take control of one of the vehicles after we've stopped its script AI path and drive it ourselves to avoid the pileup. So once more, I'm going to click on the stop playing beside the ETKI and the midsize. But this time, instead of letting it play out, I'm actually going to switch over to the um, midsize vehicle here, and I'm actually going to drive it myself. I've even switched over to the interior view just to show you that you can use many different angles when playing back script AI and recording your scenes. The advantage to this, as you probably noticed, is that you have much more control over the braking. This allowed me to bring the car to a much more gentle stop rather than having it spin out like Script AI did. This is just one simple example of creating a crash scene using Script AI and pileups. You can obviously vary things like the number of cars, speed, etc., but hopefully this gets you started. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I definitely plan on doing more videos with other Script AI concepts. So if you have any other questions or ideas, feel free to leave me a comment below. As always, I appreciate your feedback and suggestions, and we'll see you in the next video.